Hello and good evening. Uh, welcome to uh, an Exchange for Media Conclave e-webinar uh, on a Thursday evening. Thank you for joining us. And uh, let me uh, start by welcoming our uh, uh, fantastic set of panelists today for this conversation. Uh, to start with, the lady on the panel, Nina Jepuria, uh, head of uh, the Viacom business of Colors and their kids channel, the Hindi, Hindi Entertainment. Welcome, Nina. Hi. There is Navneet Elvi from down south, from Chennai, the CEO of uh, one of India's most read and largest uh, newspapers, the Hindu group. Hello, Navneet. Uh, we have uh, with us also Abhinav Khare, the CEO of Asia News Network. And as you all know, news has been the talk of the town for the last few months. Abhinav, good to have you uh, join us. We also Hello. have another uh, perspective from the news domain, uh, Rahul Sood, Managing Director of, of uh, BBC Global in India. Hello, Rahul. And as Hi, Rahul is his new boss has joined in uh, just a day back, so he'd like to be excused early. So, Rahul, we'll uh, throw a lot of uh, questions at you up front. Sure, uh, sure. We also have a perspective from uh, brand and advertisers. Sudhanshu Nagpal, Associate Director Marketing at Monkey <coughs> has joined us. Thank you, Sudhanshu. Last Hello. but not the least, M. Parthasarthi, MAPS, as he's called, CEO of Mindshare uh, India, based in uh, Bangalore, India's largest media agency. Thank you, uh, Nina and the gentlemen uh, for joining us. Let me start with you, Nina. To, uh, let me just set the context before we start. Uh, like we were discussing just before uh, we went live, uh, we are in the throes of uh, six months of the pandemic and none of us foresaw the situation. Uh, this is unprecedented really in many ways. Uh, what has happened in the media advertising marketing business is partly a uh, result of the long-term trends were, that were taking hold and part acceleration due to, uh, you know, COVID-induced uh, changes. Viacom is a large entertainment company. Uh, you have a stake in almost all domains, whether it is television, there is uh, digital, there is entertainment, there's kids entertainment. We all know the kind of uh, numbers that Bark has been giving out, the impact on media consumption that has happened. If you were to look out another six, say, to 12 months, if we were having this conversation again uh, sometime around next year, what are the two, three trends do you think which will last post-COVID in the entertainment space? Uh, so uh, let me just start by saying um, thank you for having us here today. Uh, good evening to all of you and wonderful gentlemen on this panel as well. Uh, uh, you know, the last five months have been totally unprecedented and there has been a certain pattern in which media has been consumed in the last five months. And uh, of course, while television has continued to be the primary uh, source and medium of entertainment and information, I think the big change that has happened, of course, is that there has been a whole lot of fragmentation of the consumer attention. And uh, I think uh, people have been consuming media across platforms, mediums, screens, and different distribution pipes. And I think that has been a, a big major trend and a, a very big uh, 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 pattern that we've seen emerge over the last five months. And uh, this has led to a whole lot of fragmentation, even from a perspective of how uh, we are catering to that audience. And uh, primarily from a Viacom 18 perspective, I think, you know, essentially we are storytellers and we want to ensure that our stories reach out to our viewers via whichever distribution pipe, medium or screen that they wish to consume us. And therefore, I think in, in the coming months, uh, we are going to see this continue as a trend where uh, content and uh, information and ent entertainment will be consumed through various pipes and various screens and various devices. And so therefore that trend, uh, when you look at it from another perspective, that trend really means that if you want to entice your consumer to come to your stories and your content, then the role of content is that much higher. The spend on content is that much higher. It also means that one size doesn't fit all. It means that you will have to spend more. You'll have to possibly uh, custom make for bucket size viewers because they are fragmented and their attention spans and viewing patterns are very, very different. But having said that, I still think that television is here to stay. 
it was going to be the primary source of entertainment for india for a while in the future and uh, that's not going away but what is going to change that it is going to become tv and digital and ott so we've really entered a and phase much faster than we had anticipated it i mean you know there was already a whole ott digital storm that was happening but we've gone you know we kind of uh, fast forward it much more in the last 5 months and we have so there is definitely going to be a uh, uh, tv and digital and otts kind of a phase that we've entered so that's one big trend to my mind the second trend i think is that in even within consumer uh, you know demographics and geographies the trend of continuing to cater to certain audiences is going to continue so there are genres here that are here to stay and they will end, and the custom made content that is being offered on those genres is here to stay as well so there is going to continue to be not just mass entertainment and gc that is of course the staple of any broadcaster and viewer but moving on from there there will be this need of having kids as a genre having regional as a genre because i see that as a big trend and that's going to continue in the future as well because regional has picked up in a big way and of course then there is ott which is also delivering online tv to you it is delivering syndicated content to you and originals and of course now there's this whole other pattern of watching movies on ott and on television and broadcast so that's a another another whole trend i think that will continue for us for some time now because i think all of us are really scared to go back to a theater for sure in a, in a while having said that therefore how do we entertain this bollywood crazy nation is going to be through serving these movies on platforms that have been not traditionally movie premier platforms so yes. these to my mind are trends that are going to continue uh, from a perspective of viewer and broadcaster from an advertiser perspective also i think and as a marketer a lot of us have to pivot our plans to adapt to this new normal and therefore you'll see a lot of the the marketing that we've done has actually moved on from television being the main staple for two reasons one is of course that it has it delivers to you mass reach at very affordable value for money rates and two it has a a very uh, uh, detailed uh, measurement to it and therefore from both perspectives giving you mass reach and the measurement data will keep te- television far more relevant but having said that i think digital media is here to stay as well as an engagement platform and as an ad- platform that will create awareness for your ba- brand and build your brand so all of us have had to pivot our brands and pivot our marketing and that's exactly what advertisers have done as well right very relevant points i'm going to pick you up uh, on some of these once sure. uh, we come back abhi now let me jump to you uh, news is also a domain that has been uh, very uh, significantly kind of uh, been doing a tango with digital right uh, uh, perhaps news television was impacted because of digital even before entertainment television started getting impacted news is television news is here to stay there is no doubt about that because of the impact it creates but do you believe that as we move forward and with the increasing fragmentation of news sources uh, that consumers are uh, you know uh, looking at what are the trends you see that that will shape up in the news domain over the next few years especially given that during covid time news consumption has spiked up significantly we have seen people have glued on to news credible news brands reliable news brands even more uh, what what do you think will happen in the next two years as we come out of covid as unlock happens as uh, the economy starts picking up again so oh, now well, i'm going to uh, answer uh, your question in three parts number one uh, i don't believe you know television uh, is going to stay forever i mean nothing lasts forever uh, the kodak people uh, nokia people they also believe nothing is going to change and things change and when it change it change right so uh, however i uh, i i really don't see us into sort of you know uh, into business of being a broadcast we are a content uh, producing companies we have our front end uh, which is the digital we have a back end which is you know all those studios and broadcast companies uh, we are uh, preparing for the future where uh, tv uh, as we know will uh, will will change of course it remains the cash cow of course uh, we are excited about it and of course it is still the 
preferred choice for the advertisers right now uh, whether it's going to uh, be the same in 5 years uh, you know uh, it's 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 everybody's guess second part uh, about uh, i mean uh, i also want to just quickly go back to you know uh, nina said that the television measurements are superior i sort of disagree i mean uh, the digital measurements are far superior the amount of data that we collect the patterns about the demography in uh, in tv uh, uh, yes there are some measurement companies coming but largely the entire industry we depend on you know the ratings which are released on thursday so we always have to wait for a week before we sort i think of know. The, i think the issue uh, we had a panel yesterday also i think uh, one issue a lot of uh, people in the advertising and the marketing business keep facing with uh, respect to measurement on digital is there is no third party currency absolutely that's what i meant itself to enough weight to say you know uh, an x platform comes and claims a certain amount of you know uh, traction a y platform so i think what the industry needs is a kind of third party measurement platform but sorry uh, com score is a is a is a, is a recognized currency i mean i have not seen anyone from times internet to uh, news18.com to daily hunt to us to anyone uh, reporting anything other than com score i mean yes 3 uh, years back even we were constantly wondering we were checking with the colleagues with the friends with the seniors which is the currency uh, i think now com score is an established one i mean everyone i mean we advertise our com score result i agree google analytics a lot of configuration issue could be there and because of that uh, you know data could be duplicated and so on but com score uh, i think, I think uh, 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 when you talk about digital you also talk about a facebook youtube the old piece and com score is not relevant for many of them so yes. that kind of what is the picture right? that's right so say it's not relevant for you know uh, news websites and other content website for correct. but for a large domain like ott facebook comscare has no relevance correct, so correct. That, you're, you're right there. yeah you're right and uh, but anyways uh, coming back to the topic you know two years i think uh, first uh, th- it's sort of a blessing in disguise i mean you know because of uh, because of this a uh, lot of uh, traditional industry like ours uh, we have been forced almost forced to you know uh, get into the transformation mode uh start trusting our, our colleagues with you know work from home options uh there is a, a prominent feeling within the media industry that the work from home actually has increased the uh, uh, the productivity the only missing part obviously is the team bonding you know the emotional health of the uh, of, of of our teammates otherwise uh, now the trust is much uh, much better in terms of you know our ability to trust uh, that okay these guys even from home they're going to work uh the customers i mean the so all the time that they are saving through the commute uh, it seems that they have just started investing in uh, in 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 you know on your phone or on your tv since uh, in the entertainment sector was not producing a lot of content uh, news industry definitely benefited uh, on an average uh, uh, i was i was just on a phone call with a colleague i think on an average industry gained uh, around 40% higher traffic within the last uh, uh, you know quarter or so for us as well uh, the pact- in fact we were slightly more fortunate since we are targeting the vernacular market so we almost doubled our traffic uh, compared to uh, february uh, i think mo- uh, eventually in two years time i would expect the customers to get more mature uh, so the content uh, side people like us will have to you know pull up our socks and try to produce slightly more intelligent content you know there is a time when uh, sort of uh you can bring traffic using the entertainment and you know other things but now slowly the pattern will change the relevant point especially for news rahul uh you uh, bbc as a brand knows this better than anybody else you have curated news content for many many years very credible news content i have a very specific question for you and it's a very so, interesting trend that is kind of got accentuated during covid uh, and that's kind of coming from personal experience as well as we go through a you know man made or you know a disaster like we have gone through covid uh, consumers tend to gravitate more and more towards credible news sources right you want Absolutely. news which is uh, truly verified but there's a very strange contradiction that because of the bombardment of news sources today i am also continuing to consume news and perhaps also going to continue to believe in multiple news sources that are coming to me and what that does for a news brand is it it kind of uh, lays bare all your plans of you know building a business monetizing uh, through consumer revenues or advertising revenue so it's it's on one hand you're getting better traction on the other hand it's almost kind of running on a treadmill and you know watching 
so much fragmentation happening that you know things are getting out of your hand so as bbc, BBC uh, which is a global brand how do you see uh, this uh, happening in india uh navel actually thank i think you've raised very relevant points and i think comes back to brand credibility being i think the preeminent thing that viewers uh, agencies clients everybody ultimately gravitates towards especially when you have a story as big as what covid has been i mean for the bbc uh, the month of march april was all time record viewership across the world including india yes i mean both on television and on digital so i mean just to put things in perspective globally we are the most watched news service even on social media so largest facebook subscribers largest number of insta followers largest on twitter largest on youtube and even on television we cross the magical 500 million households across the world so if i take that number of say approximately 4 to 5 viewers per household we're looking at any given point approximately 2 to 2 and a half billion people having access to bbc news in some form or the other on some street so i mean for us it was i think uh, there, as i say there's nothing like a story like this yes it stretched our resources like nobody's business because obviously newsrooms had to work in a sanitized manner and you're still churning out 14 16 hours of live news content a day across all platforms so i think the learning curve was that uh, and many of our reporters ended up converting their living rooms to their yeah. uh, bedrooms and attics into news mini news studios and continue doing so so i think that way it was uh, and the process continues still you know so if you enter the newsroom you'll probably just find the regular robotized cameras in the main studios and every and there's not a single human being inside the anchor come does a story the shift and out so uh, coming back from a trend perspective i think uh, as i said we've seen record viewership across all screens all platforms and we in fact even had some of our affiliates not just in india but many other parts of the world who reached out and asked that you know since bbc is the most credible you know news brand out there can we start carrying your service in the basic services because i think there was so much of misinformation and speculation around covid i think there was all kinds of news being bombarded and i think whatsapp led the way where there was a lot of unfair verified information circulating as gospel truth and i think that's when more and more people started mm-hmm. gravitating towards trusted news brands so i think the biggest learning for us is that uh, i think it's enhanced our uh, visibility and our credibility even more and i mean just to put things in perspective the most trusted news brand even in the us today after the local news stations is actually bbc ahead of abc nbc cnn fox everybody put together so it's telling you that today viewers are more and more i think recognizing because of the bombardment of social media and all other kinds of dodgy news outlets that ultimately you will go back to brands that you know you uh, who, who build themselves and have a 100 year legacy around trust very relevant point i think and i'm i'm going to pick that up with navneet uh, he's also part of a company that uh, runs a, yeah. a very trusted news brand navneet my question to you is how do we get consumers to pay more we've seen what's happened in the us with new york times their consumer uh, subscription revenues have really gone through the roof they've done really well on that count they've continued to produce high quality content and on the back of increased subscription revenues they have managed to invest even more in producing better content how does one that do that in india given you know as rahul said with so much whatsapp unverified news floating around uh, on television news is almost free how do credible news brands earn more from consumers in a country like india any thoughts sir yeah, thanks novel good question and uh, <clears throat> i think the beginning is to make a start i think if if publishers or people in the content business don't value their own content uh, you don't expect the world okay. to value so the problem is not with the consumer the problem is with us Uh, and i think indian media has given away too much for too little for too long so Very this is a problem we have created uh, we are run our businesses on wrong business models uh, with an over dependence of advertising uh, <clears throat> this situation is only accelerated what was inevitable uh, so clearly the future is in reporting the business to a reader revenue business not, not necessarily an advertiser revenue business that's right and i think two three things one can do on the publishing business Uh, publishers can respect their cover prices uh, and price it reasonably high so that people see value in it and pay for it uh, 
on the digital business i think it's important to get people to see value in what we do and get them to pay for it uh, we have started the journey and and you ride on ride on similar values as others are talking you ride on trust you ride on credibility uh, i think what what uh, what the last 5 6 months have taught us is uh, to double down on our purpose uh, to stay true to our vision to realize the importance of what we represent and what we do i think and i speak for many others not just for us uh, what we bring to the table what we bring to democracy what we bring to the world is of great importance and if that is the purpose you can't fund this purpose without profits uh, and hence devoting to subscription revenues becomes very important uh, we have made that start and we realize that people are willing to pay for content uh, we have had a decent journey and i think the publishing business also uh, puts blinkers on our ambition your your ambition is contained by the markets you are able to physically serve uh, while the opportunities for people in the language space are immense within india uh, i think for people in the content business in english the, the audience is truly global if we believe we produce world class content uh, if we believe we uh, <clears throat> we have things to say about how the world should be if we believe that we truly solve for a better world uh, bring bring equality in every sphere of life bring the values of democracy we do as good a job as many global brands uh, my sense is we haven't believed that we do a good job and we're limited in our own ambition and i think it's also a matter of going after the low hanging fruit first and that's what has happened over the last 20 years but perhaps this will be no uh, you know better time for uh, the publishing business to get a push from the environment as covid is if it won't happen now it'll never happen and by the way the complication also is as we as we all know there is a lot of fragmentation on the you know digital platform so uh, monetizing digital news uh, is tough but that's the holy grail if you believe in the content you produce if you believe in the platform you have this is the time to do it uh, relevant point so don't you let me jump to you uh, you bring in the advertiser perspective two three questions uh, it is true that you know credible uh, people gravitate more towards credible uh, sources of news as well as entertainment but there's far too much fragmentation happening right mm-hmm. the world outside uh, and india is such a heterogeneous country the consumption is happening on digital on multiple ott platforms regional for a company like mondelez you're also a, a global company and you have to adhere to certain standards in terms of how where you're advertising what you're doing in this complex environment of consumption of content how do you choose the primary you know media platforms that you want to associate with and how much role does credibility of the platform play in your media mix because you know some global companies certainly put weight to that that might not be necessarily true in india how does mondelez see that in india well absolutely i think uh, you know we are you know we are quite proud and you know uh, passionate about our brands and i think brands are brands exist in service of consumer you know how do you build brand you need to be able to understand your consumer go where your consumers are and be able to engage and connect with them in a meaningful manner so in that spirit uh, i think the way we choose our mediums i think uh, you know it's very strongly driven conventionally it was driven through a multimedia reach model so you know if we know our consumer and we understand you know which mediums gets us the reach in the most optimal manner i mean it's driven through a lot of analytics as well so we do market mix modeling to understand what's the roi of each of the medium and hence what's the optimum mix i think the way it's evolved for us globally as well as in india you know tv has been the the main hold uh, medium to drive reach conventionally traditionally and it's continue to stay stronger we don't know what will yeah it's going to look like 10 years down the line but where we exist in the near future i think tv is the mainstay But what has shifted is really the whole digital evolution. I think it's been happening for last two three years globally in India as well. It has picked up really fast. I mean, just to give you a sense, over last three years, you know, as an organization, as a brand like uh, Oreo, for instance, um, you know, the spend which goes into digital has moved from say six percent of overall ANC spend last you know, three years back to almost thirty five forty percent now. And similarly, brand which is uh, more youth centric like Silk. where the consumer is actually the millennial and the gen zs who are spending more time on digital you know almost 50% of our spend goes on digital so i think it's more coming from where is consumer spending more time 
and where are they engaging with content and hence the brand needs to find a way to become part of that content in a meaningful manner to be able to engage consumer so tv and digital uh, you know digital becoming bigger and bigger uh, especially now with uh, this whole uh, covid i think one trend which we believe is happening you know, while tv uh, is uh, going strong i think the whole digital space has further got accelerated so the role of uh, you know as uh, we heard earlier so facebook social media we know you know people are spending more time uh, similarly ott is emerging another big channel which so far we have not been uh, tapping into you know and we are now thinking hard on saying how do we bring that in the mix uh, similarly within digital you know genres like you know influencers you know is one big uh, stream which has been there as a brand are we doing it in a meaningful strategic manner do we need to move so there's a lot of new opportunities which are emerging i think e-commerce for example i mean what we have realized especially in covid is the potential and power of e-commerce now Absolutely. while as the mobility will come back consumer will start moving out outlets are opening e-commerce will come back but clearly i mean that you know what has happened is it has accelerated the whole uh, e-commerce journey and we believe e-commerce going to be big for a cpg company like us as well in the future so one of the big shift we are making is how do we think about marketing you know which was always top of the funnel for us which is about awareness and reach versus shifting to end to end funnel you know how do we you know ensure that every dollar we spend on marketing helps us close the sale with the e-commerce partners at the same time every dollar we spend for e-commerce platform to close the sale also build brand equity so how do you look at overall digital in a holistic manner uh, and uh, bring e-commerce lens to it as well so that's how i think we are evolving uh, you know what we believe is digital will be a important medium it will play a larger role and how we build brand and how do how we engage with our consumers and brand safety is very very important so i think uh, very consciously we make a choice of not venturing into spaces where we don't have a conviction on whether our brand safety will be taken care of measurability is another big area where we are i mean we spend huge money you know and not being able to you know with conviction say whether that money is giving returns is a big question mark and that's something which we struggle when it comes to quite a few of the digital mediums we invest on you up on that suranchu before you go rahul i'm going to come to you partha but rahul has a hard stop at 4:30 so i'm going to ask so, i'll probably stay for another 15 minutes i'll uh, there'll be a recorded session so maybe i'll uh, watch that a little later no problem around anyway let me ask you uh, uh, since i'm with you bbc is a brand built on television right and as we've seen a lot of news consumption entertainment consumption is uh, moving towards digital Three years out or five years out, uh, increasing consumption of news will happen on digital. In an era like that, how do you keep the relevance of a brand? Because you'll be competing with, you know, right now as you said in America, BBC is one of the top most credible uh, news brands, primarily because of the power of television, right? And as you move increasingly towards digital, the fragmentation in, in effect will start kind of impacting more and more. How do you make sure that your brand kind of retains the aura in a you know digital first world so to say see nabal actually i'd like to just correct you it's not just television uh, for the bbc it's been digital first for the last i think 7 8 years now so i mean the most consumed news content on facebook watches bbc content youtube we're right up there in maximum insta followers twitter uh, so it's the whole spectrum of digital news and i think we've seen that in the numbers we've uh, also garnered you know from the start of covid every month now i mean just to put things in perspective uh, bbc hindi which is our world service site is amongst the top 5 most consumed news video content on smartphones in india i mean this is as per bob nielsen data this is not our data this is bob nielsen it's just i think last week they had that whole industry 90 page presentation out there and bbc hindi which is just a digital service so just to put things in perspective we've got 42 language services across the world of which large majority are just digital so you see bbc hindi urdu punjabi kannada tamil uh, gujarati which are just purely digital services they are not on television yes we run certain segments of the half an hour bulletin or a one hour bulletin on tv but these are digital first bought services you can consume the content when you want and we're churning out all the same the key stories every day putting out 15 to 20 uh, videos on those 
And my perspective is that today, if linear TV, the way we know it, cable and satellite, I think what is driving it today, if it is not, it is only live sports and live news. The rest, all other genres are consumed on demand, at least for the top 100 million in this country, which I call India. The guys who have a choice of consuming content on smartphones, OTT, Apple boxes, Amazon Fire Sticks, are consuming all other genres in that India one on video on demand. Yes, the rest of Bharat and Hindustan, which doesn't have a choice. And, you know, we are still a wireless broadband country. We are not a wired broadband country. I think the day you get more wired broadband connectivity and more OTT content starts getting consumed on television. I mean, just to put again a number out there, 65% of Netflix consumption in the US is on, uh, on large TV screens. But in India, I mean, probably it's down to a single digit number. Most of it is consumed on uh, mobile devices. So I think as soon as you start seeing that shift and as I come back to sports and news is what is going to keep cable and satellite going for a long while. I mean, unless you have some major sports rights for a couple of years and live news. I mean, the, I mean, actually just look at your own uh, viewing habits. I think you only switch on the telly really to consume live news or live sports. The rest you can watch when you want, how you want at your whims and fancies. Yeah, that's how it is. Yes, partly true. But as people say, India is like a two track country. Television is growing while, you know, digital is also picking up and that is likely to continue. Exactly, for exactly, exactly. Even print is uh, growing in many parts of the country. So it's not sunset for print yet. Partha, uh, coming to you, you, hand, you, you manage a very large portfolio of clients. You work with, you know, advertisers, brands across categories. Tell us two things. What do we expect in the next six months when, when it comes to advertising spends? Because I think people are very anxious about that. Second is from what you've seen happening over the last six months, What's your sense of how uh, spends over the next, the trend of spends over the next two years will pan out? Okay, so I think uh, I would like to address this in a slightly different uh, way. I think marketers today are increasingly, and Sudhanshu will be able to bear me out, I think are increasingly looking for more accountability of uh, advertising investment. What the last few months have seen is that if we were to look at top of funnel to bottom of funnel kind of uh, emphasis of expenditure, it's evened out more and more and more and more is going towards the bottom of the funnel in terms of trying to drive some kind of tangible end result. Yes. Right now that is in a way influenced uh, expenditure. Obviously this is different for different categories, right? Now, globally, what we are seeing uh, this year is that probably television will be down in the low double digits, uh, you know, and digital will hold its ground at a global level, you know, probably 0%, 1% this way, that way, right? Uh, globally, of course, uh, things like print and all are in much more danger than they are in India. So they are probably dropping in the 20 plus kind of percentage. Now, in India, what we are seeing is obviously digital is continuing to hold its ground. Uh, television has, has dropped more than the global drop, but it will also recover more than the global recovery. And, and that's the anticipation for as we move into 2021. What is definitely there and without, it's an immutable fact, is that there will be more money which will be spent towards things that drive performance. Uh, you know, whether it's television uh, and, and therefore uh, moving towards more and more addressable audiences, the ability to hyper target, the ability to, you know, really sharp target audiences, the ability, you know, one of the things, trends which I saw recently is that, you know, hyper localization has, has been jump started because of COVID. So I had to look at Bangalore as an example. One street has COVID, the other street doesn't. You know, there are, there are grocery shops open in one, uh, in one section, but not in the other, right? Increasingly, marketers are going to want to really, really hyper-target, uh, get more sharper, go to audiences who are able to deliver them more results and so on. So all media which moves in that direction is going to get more investment going forward. And I think that's, I know it's not a direct answer to your question, Naval, but, but I think that's how it's going to go. Ask a follow-up question since you advise uh, brands. You know, digital is very performance oriented, as you said, and uh, very lead generation oriented, as you, uh, as you would understand. Television has been built around building a brand, right? Yep. And do you think a lot of brands today are missing the opportunity to build a long-term brand and forsaking that in favor of creating short-term leads, you know, doing performance generation, 
because of which what what is happening today is any newbie brand can just walk in do better performance marketing you know spend very little money on brand building and suddenly you have you know you're competing against an upstart without realizing that you know you allowed your brand to dilute uh, all these years so is there a is there a, a opportunity being missed by marketers where too much of focus is going into you know performance you know i uh, you are you are absolutely right you know there is a very big danger of being myopic in this whole thing so i think i think where i think the big change is now uh, navel is that this need for through the funnel uh, thinking is is very important because the problem even comes when it looks when you look at things like attribution right uh, if people say it's the last click that got you your, your final result then you will keep investing behind what got you that last click but the guy has seen your tv ad the guy has seen the newspaper ad the guy has then looked at search queues the guy has then probably seen an ad of yours on facebook and then clicked on something and then eventually made the purchase perhaps on an e-commerce platform right uh, and this is not this is true across categories whether it's automotive whether it's bfsi whether it's fmcg it is important for us to look at the impact of each one of those marketing investments on the end outcome and 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 definitely that's why i say tv is here to stay you know print has a definite role to play there is a role for all of this all i'm trying to say is that eventually driving that accountability through the funnel is going to be important so every medium has to live up to it that's all i'm trying to say you know uh, relevant points about marketing and i'm marketing. very happy to hear all of them actually that's right i i'm sure you are <laughs> but you know what is undeniable is that mm. this wave of opinion shifting towards you know uh, performance yes. and lead generation and more and more like sudhanshu said you know as opposed to 6% of uh, spends of Mar- uh, of oreo uh, almost 35 40% spends are going to digital and uh, the hard reality is it is unlikely it'll shift back to 10 or 15% anytime soon not happening for the next 2 3 years so that money that has gone to digital is lost my question to you is as a entertainment company which dabbles both in television and uh, you know digital uh, the the winds of change will obviously sweep the entertainment sector consumers are going to spend more time on digital but the primary business is built on a certain revenue model around television right and you yes. cannot curate a uh, alternate business model overnight in the digital space how do you think the transition will happen over the next 3 to 5 years that's a question people have been asking for many years now but i think this year is also in many ways an inflection year for otts right mm. or digital content consumption digital entertainment content consumption what happens to the business model of uh, for lack of better word let me use you know legacy or traditional media companies right how do you make the transition without you know kind of getting decimated so that's an interesting question but uh, the way i'd like to answer this is to say that like i was telling you right up front when i started to say that i think this we are we've entered an and phenomena right so we are talking about uh, being a uh, 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 the many being part of tv and digital and ott so that's here to stay and we have to coexist So I think there are two things that that we should be looking at from uh, an entertainment company, and I think what we are doing uh, over the past few years as well, and we started already last year itself with NTO and all of that, is one is of course create a business model for traditional TV as a business, and reduce our dependency on uh, ad sales and ad revenue, and slowly and steadily we are seeing that move as well. uh we had very substantial growths in our subscription revenues last year and the new uh, nto actually was a win win for all the stakeholders in this in the economy so uh so having said that of course we've not gone to the level of the west where ad sales and subscription revenue are at 50 50 but having said that we are going closer to that more and more as we go it's become much healthier than it and was much healthier and that actually gives us the ability of of course investing back into content which is therefore going to entice the fragmented consumer who's now viewing us so one is of course looking at the the you know the the revenue model and the television module per se of how we run the television business the other part of course is to say that uh, how can we therefore create content and ips where we can actually sweat the asset beyond one medium yes. and that is what we've been doing and therefore you know a uh, one ip one platform doesn't justify the pnl and, and you know at all anymore 
And therefore, you look at what we've done at Viacom 18 very successfully. And, you know, we were anticipating and wanted to be future ready. And therefore, while we have all our, you know, brands, which is right from Colors to Nickelodeon to MTV, we also have Woot and Woot Kids, which, and, and, you know, in turn ensure that our consumers are getting that same content on OTT and on any other screen and device that they wish to. But what you also saw was that the IP that we created for traditional media has actually even become even bigger on OTT. And when you look at, say, for example, Big Boss 13, which was a season last year, it was the biggest season uh, of Big Boss in the history of Big Boss, you know. And having said that, it, you know, we actually made it a complete rating grosser and revenue grosser, not just on colors, but actually on Woot as well. And therefore, the whole, uh, the pattern and trend will be, therefore, how do you create an IP and content where you can sweat the asset just not on one medium or one platform or one, on one service, but you sweat the asset across all the distribution pipes. And that's what, you know, like we said, we did this for Big Boss and advertisers gained as well. Like we were saying, you know, it's now, uh, it's about coexisting. And therefore, Big Boss was being watched and advertisers were, you know, coming on the colors as well as, of course, you had advertisers and great amount of takers on Woot as well for engagement on digital. Similarly, in the kids' content, for example, all the local IPs that we've created over the years, whether it's Mutupatlu, Shiva, Rudra, all of that, is now being housed on Woot and Woot Kids. And that is exactly the content that is trending on those on OTT as well right now. So it's about creating a business model where uh, subscription comes in to lower the dependence and you create content and IPs which are, which are being leveraged across distribution pipe screens and uh, yes. devices. I think subscription is very relevant point, something Navneet spoke about. Navneet, let yeah. me come to you. Uh, I'll pick up again from uh, where we left last about, you know, subscription revenues. Where do you think, you know, print has credibility. We all know that these are, you know, brands which are more than 100 years old. Where do you think the print industry has kind of not managed the narrative well when it came to advertisers? Because I think there's a lot of value in, you know, as the panelists have also said, a lot of value in terms of what print delivers, both to the consumer as well as to the advertiser. Where is the lag in the narrative? So, <clears throat> I wish I could answer that question, but, but I, will, I will try to. I think importance of print hasn't gone down. Many advertisers uh, realize the role of print. Uh, to that extent, I don't think the narrative has suffered. Uh, the, the landscape has changed. Uh, from a print and TV only, the number of options have expanded. And uh, that is a stress one is seeing. Uh, and the na way to navigate that in my viewers. Uh, and the same question you asked, Nina, about uh, broadcasting applies to, applies to publishing as well. As you build revenues for the future, how do you hold your current business? Uh, that is a challenge, and that's a two, three year old, two, three year journey to make. I think on, I think my personal view is the publishing business will stay healthy. Uh, it is not going to, uh, it's not going to er erode exponentially, but it will be under challenge. Uh, one needs to manage costs efficiently there. Use those to invest in whatever transition publishers are making towards a content mindset and digital. And, uh, and on that journey, it's a good beginning. Uh, for instance, Naval, in our, in our case, our digital subscription revenues are 60% of our total digital revenues. Uh, so there, uh, we seem to have got the, begun the journey well and got the equipment right. Uh, on publishing also, we are seeing, in our case, a higher percentage of revenue coming from, uh, from cover prices uh, and a lower percentage of revenue coming from advertising, not because of COVID. Uh, so that's yes. a transition that began a year ago. So I think print print continues to be relevant. Uh, the narrative, if, if one way to say, where has the narrative suffered? The narrative has suffered from taking an integrated multimedia solutions approach to clients. Uh, I think we could do a better job of that. Some of us are doing that and we are seeing the benefits of that. Right, yeah, I think fair point. Where do you see this? Uh, how do you see the advertising on print picking up say 12 months out? It's been you know very hard. I think print industry, after OH has been hardest hit because of COVID. And it also kind of slowly been clawing back, but it's still far away from, you know, being back to the index of 100. You see 
you know, uh, things getting back on track by April because April this year anyway was bad, right? So do you, do you see an index of 100, say 2019 April getting replicated in 2021 April? See, I, I think one of the things I have found uh, easy to communicate from a leadership standpoint of view, and I think it applies for all of us, uh, is to be vulnerable and be bold enough to say, I don't know. Uh, forget April. Uh, none of us know what's going to happen 15 days, 15 days down the line. Fair enough, yes. Uh, while we have plans, we have no visibility to what will happen. Uh, most of our uh, future plans are on hopes and optimism, thinking things will turn around. Uh, having said that, uh, from an index point of view, April, all of us know was a single digit index of previous previous year April, uh, we have seen recovery month on month. Uh, and August for us, given the context, was a good month. Uh, we expect festival to be good, uh, reasonably good, not better than last year. The festival season we are expecting to be in the range of 85% to 90% of last year. Uh, I think that's very good. I mean, if you... Yeah, and my my own sense is uh, right. decline in print for the full year and maps will have a better view of that. Uh, my sense is decline, uh, de decline in print for the full year will be in the range of 30 to 40 percent, language being closer to 30 percent, and English being closer to 40 percent. This is advertising revenues. Advertising revenue. revenue. The total revenues are a function of what your subscription revenues are, what your digital revenues are. That is in a far better place for us. Uh, I wouldn't even start to venture and hazard what next year looks like simply because uh, I don't know next month. Right. Fair enough. I think very candid uh, uh, of you, Navneet. Thank you for that. Abhinav, uh, I see you uh, smiling. Uh, do you share the same view? We don't know what happens next year. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> uh, yes, I mean, absolutely. We are obviously, uh, we, we plan, we plan for everything, you know, two scenarios, three scenarios. But at the end of the day, uh, it's with, uh, you know, it's between God and us. All we could do is just pray. For, I mean, we don't know when the economy is going to recover. We're definitely uh, 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 expecting, uh, the, you know, the things to improve uh, from uh, October onwards because the, the second half is always better than the first half in, traditionally in India. Uh, and yeah, like uh, Nami uh, just said, uh, fortunately, August has been uh, a better month for us compared to, you know, the, the previous uh, uh, few months. Uh, so. September, October uh, will 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 you know start to show the trends and but again you know we we really don't know what we don't know. Fair enough. Before I take up some questions from the audience, Partha, last question. You have a ringside. You have a very good uh, quality view of what clients are thinking. You think ad spends are uh, going to be back on track uh, for growth next year? This year, as we all know, is going to be a mixed bag for different media. What's your sense next year? I'm I'm sure many clients are not yet you know, planning for next year, but uh, some companies work Jan, December. Uh, what's your what's your take? Yeah, I think uh, Jan, December 2021 uh, may not reach 2019 levels, uh, you know, but it will definitely be a strong positive trend uh, from where we are today. Yes, uh, yeah, for know. all practical purposes has been yeah, so this year anyway, you might as well consign it to the rubbish bin and start from scratch. But having said that, I think uh, I think it will take a little longer than 2021 to get back to pre-COVID uh, levels. But it it will definitely be very strongly in that direction. We can, we can recall, uh, return this year as the base year. You know, that will ensure next five years we have fantastic growth. Yeah, yeah. You'll do, a <laughs> do a CAGR starting 2020 and everything will look brilliant. That's right. So, Danchu, uh, I have uh, something to ask you. You mentioned about Oreo uh, spending significantly more money on digital. Do you think as we as digital gets more traction from advertisers, the questions that are being asked of the medium are going to become more pointed, uh, more accountability will be sought. And as we also briefly discussed, uh, lack of third party measurement is also kind of going to put off many advertisers who are increasingly investing more and more money, but then realizing two things. One, it is very focused on you know performance driven marketing, and two, uh, there is a risk of investing a lot of money in digital at the expense of not uh, spending that money on building brand. So I have a, I mean the way we see it, uh, novel is a little different. So we are not uh, you know looking at digital more from a performance marketing lens. I think the 
the learning or the realization is you know, the medium itself is becoming a lot more important. I think there was a time when your know, brand used to think about brands and consumer. They used to come up with some content and then you know, TV used to be one which you know, used to carpet bomb your single message to everyone. Now today, your medium has become more important, I guess. You know, so consumer is spending more time on social media because of social media. Your brand is not important. Yeah. He's on medium because of the content he wants to engage in. The way he behaves on social media is very different the way he behaves when he's on OTT or the way he behaves when he's on you know, TV or the way he behaves when he's you know, engaging in some apps. So the touch points have expanded and the mediums have become a lot more important. So I think the, the way we look at it is, I mean, we need to start uh, you know, thinking creative and content medium out. So how is consumer behaving in medium and hence, how does the content needs to be thought through based on platform or the medium? So it's not as much the way we think about performance, but it's about saying, how do we get the right creative and the right content for the medium? Because you know, if you put a TV ad on a Facebook, it's a, it's a most stupid thing to do because we know it doesn't work. You know, beyond three, five, six seconds, I mean, audience lose interest and moves on. So how do you think uh, Facebook out? Versus how do you, you know, so I think that's where the shift is happening. It's a big challenge. I mean, our creative ecosystem is not, uh, you know, developed or <laughs> used to that. So that's the one perspective. But yeah, I think uh, it's a big piece. I mean, digital, we know consumers are spending more time on digital, various touch points, various mediums. And uh, there is big amount of money which is going in and some of those mediums, Facebook being one, Google being so there is a constant endeavor to get sharper about what does that money delivering. I mean, just to give you an example, uh, you know, there was, there was, I would say was, because there was a huge uh, trend on TikTok. I mean, as a brand, we couldn't and we didn't went to TikTok because of exactly the same reason. We were not very sure whether TikTok has the means and mechanism readily available to give us conviction whether the brand safety will be taken care of, whether you know, ROIs can be measured. And so we... We like to play safe when it comes to brand safety. I think that's sacrosanct. So, and the measurability is a big uh, ask. So, that's right. I think brand this will be task more over the next two, three years. Yeah. Uh, before I uh, take audience question, one last round uh, to all the panelists. What do you think the government can do more to kind of revive the economy, one, and specifically help the media sector? Meena, we can start with you. Well, I think, first of all, I think they should take away this uncertainty of regulations which are coming and going to begin with. And I think that itself will clear a whole lot of planning for the future in terms of where the m &E should go. Particularly, I'm talking about from a broadcast perspective. Yes. And, you know, we are talking about NTO and then we talked about NTO1 and then we are talking about NTO2. And I think there's a whole lot of uncertainty on all of that. So I think one, of course, is to get rid of all of those in terms of, you know, get there and tell us this is the one thing that we will do and stay with it and stay the course for the next, you know, two, three years, let it settle down, let the system get, you know, everything needs to settle down. It takes time. We are a country, like you said, which is, uh, you know, full of heterogeneity and we need to get things sorted on ground. So let's not be in a hurry to, you know, get into different kinds of regulation. So to me, one is of course that in, in terms of how do we, regulate the regulations that uh, you know are so uncertain today and we get hit by something new every two three months and there is a new uh, regulation on distribution and there's a new regulation and legislation on all of that so i think one of course is is that part the other of course is to look at how uh, the the economy is talking about made in india and i think that's going to work a, a, a large part in in the favor of mne as well where uh, a lot of the anti-China stroke made in India will, uh, you know, bring in a whole lot of more emphasis on India in terms of employment rates, in terms of employment, uh, in terms of manufacturing and all of that. So that in turn comes back to how, uh, you know, our mediums are used from a brand building, brand awareness perspective and brings back advertisers faster than they would have otherwise. So I think these are the two things that government, of course, and of course the other uh, economic policies and, of course, all our uh, the other parts. Yes. Navneet, what do you think? Yeah, I think first we should fix what is in our control uh, before before asking the government to fix 
what our issues are is my firm belief uh, expectation of from government is largely in the regulatory space which is left best left to industry bodies that interact and we will save that for another day but i think what we should all work with the government uh, is see we will see consumers coming back to streets we will see shops being open but what is missing is confidence in the future among consum among the consuming classes so if if all of us can work together with the government to get back a sense of security among people and some confidence that would serve everybody well not just media but also the not just industry but the country as well so th that is one area i think all of us can do well to collaborate with the government sounds good abhinav what's your so um, my uh, overall uh, extremely happy with the government policies but definitely would request uh, clarity you know a, la a long scale uh, framework especially related to the digital fdis currently there is it's extremely ambiguous you know is it 26% is it 49% is it going to change in future and then uh, you know the this way uh, especially the news media industry will find it hard to compete uh, with uh, let's say the technology companies so whatever i mean it's it's a already a solved problem the telecom industry internet industry they already went through it uh, i see no reason why digital news media uh, should be treated any different than any technology company right rahul uh, actually just picking up from what navneet and neena just said i think uh, from media perspective i think we've got this big challenge happening with the nto and try to trying to again regulate pricing on the subscription side and you know i think that's really an area that uh, let forbearance and market forces decide how channels should be priced at because i have a feeling if they able to keep pushing that on the linear tv side you're going to see an impact happening on the digital side as well i think they will try if they get some success like they've had in the telecom space and trying to regulate pricing and what bundle airtel can push and what vodafone can do and what jio can do i think we are going through the same challenge on the television side that don't price your channels at 19 bucks prices at 12 this is the level of discount you can give so all of those areas and if that comes through on linear tv which what try is really trying to push and you know the case is currently being heard in the bombay high court and if they get success with that i can foresee problems happening on the digital regulation and pricing as well and you know if the price of petrol is dependent on market forces and the price of what apples and bananas we go and buy are determined by market forces why should you know content which takes a lot of money and to produce quality content costs money why should that be regulated by uh, the regulator in india so i think that's really my key no. takeaway and i think uh, as any self respecting economist is saying that we probably in india at an overall level just need to spend our way through this crisis i think we just need to get money out there and build confidence you know ultimately love or hate the western world but i think there's a circulation of money in the system is what keeps so many things going and i think that seems to have dried up to a large extent so yeah from a media perspective i'd say let the government come out and start spending more money on their campaigns advertising this that and finally whatever money is due to the advertisers they start paying their fair share uh, fairly quickly and not delay those payments so that all media houses can function smoothly Mohanshu Partha, I have to ask you: What's your expectation from media companies uh, beyond lower pricing? What more would you expect from them next six, eight months? Sudhanshu, you go first. <laughs> no, I, I think uh, you know somewhere we touched upon uh, the piece on saying, and I think yeah, Partha only mentioned. You know, uh, it's a tough time. You know, businesses have taken a hit. Uh, every spend dollar, rupee is getting questioned. so how do we get uh, more uh, accountable and performance oriented and when i say performance i'm not talking about performance marketing but you know every dollar spent what is it getting us back i think there is lot more rigor which we can expect and we will put in and hence the media companies also needs to come to the party and bring that uh, you know conviction and value to the table i think that's uh, that to me i think is a big one i think and the other piece uh, you know brand safety i mean and measurability in some of those mediums is a question mark which uh, how i don't know but uh, eventually we'll have to get a solve for that's right uh, I, i was also reading bark has also taken some steps today uh, with regards to landing pages which i think has been a very simmering issue in the news broadcasting business you know uh, would be seized of the matter 
So I think, yeah, I think the television industry is also moving in a direction where they are more seized of the, you know, uh, the opportunities that they can uh, give to marketers and also make sure that, you know, ROI is not just delivered, but it is seen to be delivered. Partha. And, and Naval, I think even on the Indian news media side, I think when uh, Suranshu and Partha both mentioned brand safety, I think the same yardstick that we apply to social media companies on brand safety, I think it needs to apply to 95% of the Indian news media out there. I mean, when that's our honest opinion. And you I think need to just step back and just watch some of the stuff that is out there. It's just unreal. Why would any brand or agency want to put money about uh, on the content that is being spewed out night after night? And uh, that's really, I think, a question we need to introspect. I think that's an interesting point, Rahul. In fact, I can't a- even that. I think nobody's going to bell the cat and everybody looks over their shoulder. But I think forget blaming the rest of the world and social media, Google's and Facebook will, you know, they're being hauled up and they're being taken to town and tasked. But I mean, before we answer that question, just let's look within the news fraternity in India. I think it's, it's absolutely yeah, I, just talking content which goes out there. I'm going to take this up with Abhinav. Uh, since you run a you know large news broadcasting company, there's an audience question which says uh, there is a remarkable dumbing down of news content and format, quite populist as, at times. Isn't credibility at stake while chasing uh, uh, viewership? Are media owners uh, uh, worried about that? See, in uh, in the free market. Uh, Finally, you know, the market share, the ratings, the revenue share, they will determine whether uh, this particular opinion uh, of you is correct or not. I mean, all of us can have subjective opinions, but at the end of the day, people who are running the businesses, they know that they cannot uh, mess around with the brand. Like Sudhanshu multiple times have said that he wants brand safety. I'm pretty sure the news media companies are also extremely aware of, you know, their credibility. So if you try to exploit it too much, of course, it could bring... uh, traffic or ratings for few weeks, but it, it, you cannot build a sustainable business, you know, like, for example, like Hindu for uh, like Asian, you know, it, you need to be consistent and credible for decades and decades before you could build that kind of brand. So uh, if someone uh, believes that they are, uh, you know, uh, doing something wrong, uh, the market will correct itself. Yes, I think that's a fair point. The market is uh, going to correct itself. Uh, I have another question which says, compared to the US, India is a mobile first country. So for OTT, how soon smart TV consumption will happen more on mobile? Nina, you you want to pick that up? Yeah, I think, uh, in fact, uh, if you look at the OTT uh, growth that has happened in the last five months, there are a couple of things that have grown on the OTT side. And I said that earlier as well. One was, of course, online TV. And the fact that, you know, people are watching TV on uh, you know their on on their geo phones and on Woot and wherever online TV is available and we are seeing a lot more of that happen on the mobile device that the individual owns and uh, therefore outside of online TV like I said there was original series and then there is syndicated content that is actually showing the way up on OTT so to my mind uh, uh, whether you watch online TV. And whether you watch it through the traditional broadcast pipe of DTH or cable, or whether you watch it on, uh, you know, on OTT, uh, for us, it is about, like I go back to keeping my point on leveraging the, the content and sweating the asset across the pipe. So, yes, of course, you will see as the penetration of smartphones increase, you will see a lot of uh, viewership moving on to online TV uh, through the through accessibility and the penetration of internet also, of course. Right. Artha, this is a question for you. What is the kind of strategy being advised to advertisers to deal with the upcoming festive season? Spend more money. <laughs> I no, wanted I to say that right up front. Spend your way out. I think, I think it's, uh, it's, it's a very interesting space, right? On one hand, you have the biggest festival, which is IPL. Then you have the other big festivals of, uh, you know, Diwali and uh, Dashara and all that. So I think, I think it's very category specific now, to be honest. I think, I think it's uh, different horses for different courses and uh, depending, it it finally gets back to brand, uh, you know, the job to be done for the brand. You know, am I, am I trying to drive, uh, uh, you know, uh, consumption or am I trying to drive awareness and therefore, uh, all we are saying, like you said, at the end of the day is please spend more money. 
but having said that uh, we definitely try and guide them uh, on the on the right mechanism because right now there is a plethora of things which can be done in in a very short time frame so i think some judicious uh, uh, decisions have to be made so novel i'd just like to add to that because i think this quarter of the festive quarter is also going to see a lot of us going beyond our usual to put up our best you know on 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 screens to entice viewers and so you will see all these very uh, non fiction impact properties also driving viewership and revenue because not only are they uh, you know revenue uh, uh, getters for the broadcasters and the media companies but they are also traditionally known to get non viewers to a particular platform yes. so i think uh, all these whether it's ipl or whether it's uh, big boss or whether it's kbc or any of these big ones that are going to come in the festive quarter will only make sure that you know your return and recovery from a viewership perspective as well as a revenue perspective will be enhanced yes and in fact we are already seeing the you know the early signs of recovery on television at least and uh, from a viacom 18 perspective we are very happy because volumes are pretty much as much uh, back to what they used to be pre covid times so it's a happy sign and it's a great beginning to a to a festive quarter which to my mind and i was telling you the other day to me is the, is the fifth quarter of the year that's right that's right absolutely uh navneet this is i think for you uh, by akanksha karan gutkar where will print fit in in the entire consumer consumption pattern now and in the future tv digital and ott has been gaining a lot of momentum how and where does print fit in i think that the answer is very different for different countries like my app said uh for india print will continue to be important uh, it will fit in with uh, people are consuming it and we are seeing increased demand for printed products uh, we haven't seen uh, demand drop off uh, but having said that uh, the future for print is going to be a hybrid future uh, so i think what what we and many others are doing is how do you transition from a publishing mindset to a content mindset and when you do that uh, and novel i worked in broadcasting i worked in radio and uh, i often get asked this question will we invest in those mediums my my answer is we need not be a broadcaster we need not be a radio station uh, but if you have the skills to tell us to print it stories in compelling video formats and audio formats that will serve as well uh, so print will continue to main be important but how we transition and use our Uh, content and adapt to digital and tell our stories through video and audio become very important uh, and i think one of the big uh, big advantages legacy legacy print companies have is uh, for instance we are a 142 year old company uh, and i don't say we have 142 years of his, uh, history i say we are 142 years of context very few companies have that and what are we in the business of we are in the business of telling today's stories using the lens of yesterday which is context and tell our consumers what is the likely impact of the choices we make today on the world for tomorrow uh, that is a story that can be compellingly told in digital uh, so to summarize what i said uh, i expect print to be buoyant from a consumption point of view print advertising could be challenging uh, in terms of declining shares uh, but but what we do from a content point of view our our content engine is our print business and that will that will be repurposed across various other mediums this question is for sudhanshu it's about influencer marketing it's a very generic question uh, the lady zinia wadia asks is it always worth the investment let me add my bit to it what is the best way to utilize uh, influencer marketing that's the question we are right not trying to answer her, honestly so what we are very clear uh, sorry guys there is my kid who has just come in so she's <laughs> don't mind that yeah that's the new normal yeah. so yeah i think uh, what we are very clear is that you know, as the ecosystem is evolving as consumers are spending more time on digital i think they are relying on your inputs from influencers to make choices i think that's the reality and it's 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 impacting different categories in a different manner i mean you see cosmetics it's a lot more you know in luxury it's a lot more uh, prominent maybe in a typical our categories is not as much today 
but influencers are playing an important role in terms of how consumers are making choice mm-hmm. now question is do we really know how to use them well the question is i mean who are the right influencers for the right brand depending of what the objective is similarly you know even the whole piece around your question mark around whether the influencer and the followers mm-hmm. is that correct number or not you know, how do you even measure it you know we we don't know honestly speaking as a marketer we are also trying to dabble and yes understand that piece but it's a piece which we need to build muscle on i mean that's much we are clear on right now yeah i can just uh, add a little bit now yeah. i think i think it's a uh, this is one thing which has really transformed in the last 4 5 months you know typically your big budget bollywood stars your big budget sports stars there's less talkability around them in the last 4 months because there are no new movie releases sports have been a little less and what has really come up is this upsurge of uh, micro nano influencers who are actually experts in certain fields and they are getting really really you know followed so i think the way brands will have to really uh, look at their basket or their portfolio of in, uh, influencers is really changing and and more and more i think there are also accountable platforms which try and make it a little more meaningful and not just shot in the dark are, are also coming in and i think that's that's the way forward it it's, right. it's become very big it's yeah, very big. very very relevant point factor in fact my namesake sonu sood probably is the biggest influencer in the last 5 months of the pandemic than any uh, bollywood or uh, uh, cricket star in india so i think that says a lot in terms of the times we're living in and yeah i think the whole influencer market has gone through a radical shift as well we have lots of questions but you know uh, naturally we don't have time we'll take one last question rahul maybe you can take this up So, what role do you see telcos and their own partnered platforms and apps play in the media consumption and buying space for example my jio savan my vodafone etc oh uh, okay i think the, the biggest animal in the room which is jio really i think they are i think the fact that they are now vertically integrating and getting all the content that they power can power i think tells you that obviously that will play a huge role as you get you know as you move forward ultimately when you do control the pipe uh, or the spectrum you are able to then and you have the customer relationship on billing then you are obviously able to bundle in a number of services with that so i think jio uh, is a prime example of that and uh, if you know from our perspective and that, that's a trend worldwide i mean you've seen the big merger with the AT&T buying time warner in the us you've got comcast and the nbc universal relationship and in india you've seen i think jio obviously acquiring all the content assets uh, initially tv18 then bycom and now i think there's obviously the sony aspect which is also being talked about so i think that's obviously going to play a huge part and ultimately uh, being the gatekeepers of the content uh, that is all being churned out yeah so uh, i think it'll be interesting as we go forward well i think power's off at your end right on cue yes. we are out we are out of time so thank you uh, nina thank you gentlemen for joining us Thank I you. think we still have more than a hundred people. There's another webinar that has started on the Exchange for Media platform, so maybe some of them have booked out there. Thank you for joining us for a wide-ranging conversation. We can go on for another hour, but uh, till next time, please stay safe and uh, look forward to seeing you all in person very soon. Hopefully, the pandemic will be behind us uh, in another two, three months' time, and uh, yes. we'll all get together. Yes, for we'll we we'll even hope, yeah. And thank you so much, guys. Good connecting with everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Take care. Thanks, Take Abel. care. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Thank Appreciate you.